are coming up from the futures. Uh, <laughs> nobody really knows your game and yeah. your weapons. The guys are practicing with every day knows. I'm playing a drop shot quite often. So they start running already when they <laughs> see me playing them. But, but the, the challenger guys don't know it yet. Play Munar, but he uh, he pulled out of the tournament. To, uh, <laughs> Munar, that's a yeah. big uh, yeah. yeah. I was pretty excited to play him, but then, then I saw him in the lobby with his suitcase and I was like, is, ah. it, is this hotel not good enough? <laughs> and, uh, and he, and he no, I'm going home. Welcome back again, tennis fans, and here we are. These podcasts are coming thick and fast at the moment, and uh, JG, we are always full of surprises these days, aren't we? Uh, and the players, they seem to keep on coming. Uh, you excited? Well, it's today? nice, mate. It's nice. We're having a good excuse to chat to a few players. Obviously, last time we was doing it is in the first lockdown we had. Now in the off-season, another opportunity and uh, let's get straight into it, because today we've got an exciting young Dutch prospect. Uh, we've already spoke to Robin Haasa earlier on, earlier on in the year. This guy's a bit younger than Robin, but yeah. can he reach the same heights? We'll find out, because we've got him all here. He's waiting in the wings right now. It's uh, Jesper de Jong. Hey. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hey. hey, great to have you on anyway, Jesper. Yeah. How has uh, life been for you uh, this year on tour? It's been a very weird year, hasn't it? Uh how have you been coping with it? Yeah, it's been pretty weird. Uh, but uh, I can't lie, it's been a pretty uh, solid year for me, uh, despite of the, uh, I think, seven months of not playing. Uh, I, I, played some, I played a lot of matches uh, in, the, in the months I, I was able to play. Uh, and I, I didn't win one title, but um, <laughs> I'm, I, I made some good results and I'm happy with that. Yeah, you definitely did. I mean... Uh... Yeah, uh, just uh, going back to there's a few results. We don't want to go too much in depth on uh, the results just yet. We just want to try and speak about uh, just you as a person first, if we can. Just like dig in. Obviously, you're a very, very uh, young guy on the tour and up and coming. And a uh, person that me and uh, JG, we've had our eye on for the past year in 2019 as just one player that could really be hitting the ground running in 2021 we think you can make a big push for stuff uh could you like give us just an idea like when did you uh when did you start on the professional tour and that type of thing like obviously you're 20 at the moment is that right yeah that's right uh i started um uh, playing like professional i i finished school at like uh age of 16 mm. um and then i went for my junior career i played like all the slams uh that was that was pretty yeah, it was pretty cool to play and to see where you want to go at the, at the highest level, of course, and walk yeah. around the, the highest players of the world and, uh, yeah, where you can dream of only as a junior. <laughs> uh, that's a really good uh, opportunity for the young guys to, yeah, to see what they are, yeah, what they need, yeah, need to work hard for to achieve that. Um, and then from my last year of juniors, I... I played a lot of juniors, but then I, I mix it up with some futures as well, uh, the 15Ks at that moment. Uh, and then from my 18th, 19th, uh, I started to play more professional because I was out of the juniors. And it went, yeah, for me, I didn't expect to go uh, this fast, but yeah, I'm happy where I am now. Yeah, well, definitely. I mean, you've had some incredible results over the past uh this is why I was most excited to have you come on the podcast. I mean, you over the part, well, what was it? it was, your last results were in, well, you're in Ecuador, weren't you? In South America, where you were playing in some challenger events. Uh, are these are yeah. your first challenger events you've played in. Uh, I played one in Holland. I, I received okay. a wild card. And then I went to Kazakhstan the, the week that every everything got cancelled. Ah, so okay. I, I, was, I was in quarterfinals it, there. No I, South quarter I think, yeah. I was in quarterfinals there in my first one, and then uh, I was so excited to play my quarterfinals. And then we got the email that everyone, everything was going to be cancelled, so that was uh, quite a bummer. But yeah, then I, I did quite well in Ecuador to uh, for my next challenger, and uh, yeah, I, I have I had my best result there. Really well, I think you're underselling yourself a little bit there. Uh, some of these players that uh, you 
have beaten in uh, in Ecuador are players that we speak about uh, regularly on the podcast as well. Which uh, you took out Valela Martinez, who is one of the one of the best uh, challenger clay court players on yeah. the tour. And uh, for you to beat a player like him uh, was seriously impressive. What was the sort of uh, how did you feel during that match? Because you must have seen him playing a, a lot on the Challenger Tour and he's been actually taking out some top players like Attila Balaj. he's been able to beat, people like that who are now inside the top 100. So, Yeah, I, I saw the draw. Uh, I was playing qualies and then I saw uh, the four spots were like where the quali qualifiers go were going to play against. And I saw the, that match and I was pretty excited. I was like, yeah, I want to, I, I want to play this guy just to to know, you know, uh, what the level is, uh, how fast the ball is going, what the impact of the ball is. Uh, it's good to see where your games are, isn't it? It's a good test. Yeah, that's that's the whole reason where uh, why we went to South America for those challengers, and yeah, I played a really strong match. I think one of the best matches of the year. Uh, yeah. The best match was the match after against Abilo. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, against Martinez, it was uh, yeah, it was yeah, quite impressive, and I didn't de uh, do much wrong that match. Um, yeah, so I was really happy with that. The yeah. Tabilo one, like you mentioned, that is super impressive. Obviously, beating him two and two straight sets, and Tabilo is quite a big guy. He's brilliant on the clay courts as well. So um, good. Was you expecting it to be that comfortable? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Uh, I was, I was uh, still quite happy from from the first round. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was I was I was feeling well on the court, and the first three yeah. matches were uh, yeah pretty good, and I had just confidence. And uh, there, yeah, you can do so many things when when a tennis player has a lot of confidence. There are so many things possible, and I think everything went right, right in that match. I don't think he felt really comfortable on on the court, uh, but I think uh, I did everything right, and yeah, I uh, yeah from start to the end, uh, I did. Yeah, nothing wrong, I think. It looked really good. Like It looked like you were really just got all the tactics right. I don't think he really knew what was coming from you. And I think the element of sort of surprise, you had a really great drop shots in that match. Your inside-out forehand looked incredible in that match. Yeah, um, it was, I think the, the, the good thing about when you're coming up from the futures, uh, <laughs> nobody really knows your game. And yeah, uh, yeah you're strong, uh, your, your weapons... Uh, the guys who are I'm they are practicing with every day knows I'm I'm playing a drop shot quite often, so they start running already when they <laughs> see me playing. Them. But, but the, the challenger guys don't know it yet. But um, yeah, I, I'm sure. I'm yeah, and I hope um, they will. Yeah. No, I'm glad you said yet because they're gonna know it soon for sure. Yeah, I, for me, I, I think I, you're I, gonna be around there for a while. And the other side, I want it, but the other side, I don't want it because I wanna I wanna use it quite often. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And then obviously, when you got past Tabilo, you went to the next round. You took out in just as impressive fashion Rocco Battaglia, who he's he's no easy person to to be. This is a guy who, in the same tournament, took out Federico Correa or Correa. Yeah. I'm not sure how that. And this is a guy who we speak about a lot. Correa, we think mm -hmm. he's like amazing forehand, and he has a lot of potential as well. Obviously, he's slightly older, but yeah. This is a guy who took him out, and he looked like he was on a run, possibly to the final, maybe. But then you just stop that. Yeah, six two six two. That match was <laughs> quite. That match was quite uh, impressive because it was like almost four hours. Uh, they started at like four o'clock in the afternoon, and they ended at eight. Uh, yeah, in the night, and um, the, both players were cramping. Pro, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think they were both Three hours. cramping. And yeah. oh, the, the match was quite impressive. And I think uh, Rocco Batala was a little bit uh, tired from those matches. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, but, but I did my thing again. And, uh, yeah, I, from the beginning to the end, I, again, I, I did a, a great job, I think. I've got a question about your juniors, actually, just to wind back to that. Um, so some of, some of the players you was playing then, are any of them like really high ranked now? Uh, Musetti, of course. Wow, um, okay. I I played I think three times against him, all quite tough matches. Uh, I won one and I lost two in three sets. Uh, yeah, that yeah, he's a good example of uh, a guy who is going pretty high now. 
Yeah. Uh, Yannick Sinner is uh, one year younger than me, but I didn't play. He didn't play much junior tournaments. Uh, but we, I saw him one time at Bonfiglio uh, in Milano, the great A, and you already saw like this guy is pretty special. Even he lost like quarterfinals or something, but you already saw that he was going to be pretty special. Um, and yeah, it's a good question about uh, the other guys. I, I wasn't like really at the top. I think my highest ranking was 30 or something, 34. Okay. But uh, but the guys were like top five or yeah at the same tournaments where I'm I, and uh, I am now so that's a, that's a good sign. It's still really amazing. You can say you've beaten Lorenzo Massetti. Yeah, uh, we've seen what he's done on tour yeah. now. Not many people could be saying that at the moment. No, no, that's true. But I want yeah. more. I want to. I want to compete at the highest level with them uh, in the yep. next years. And it's 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 really nice to see uh, him playing so good and. Uh, yeah. We are. We are. I, I'm not speaking to him pretty often, but uh, yeah, we, I, I congratulated him with the, with his results, and uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty nice for him. Oh, it's a brilliant blueprint, isn't it, for you? If you can look at someone like that, you've played against him, uh, you know how he's done it. You can sort of use that as sort of motivation for yourself to maybe follow a similar football, uh, like uh, yeah, of course, and path. you know, and you know that you play, you played him in juniors, and uh, you know. Yeah, what he was able to, and that the, that the level was quite uh, the same at that time. Of course, he's playing better now, but uh, I know I can be yeah at the level as well. It just takes a little longer now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, one of the other players that you played in that tournament, unfortunately, you lost. But this guy is probably one that everybody's suddenly waking up to a little bit on the tour, which is uh, Andre Martin, who. Yeah. Uh, for, on clay court, this guy is a bit of a beast, really. We've w been watching him for quite a long time as well. You, yeah. you still took him to three sets as well. This is very impressive. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a pretty good match. Uh, it's a little bit different. You feel like the the small things are so uh, so key against the uh, yeah the top hundred players. I know. Uh, he, yeah. yeah, I think he's top hundred now. You see that I had uh, in the first set. I had three games on my own serve game where I had game points on my own serve and I, I, I didn't take the I didn't take the game and yeah and for 40 15 or 30 love or 40 love even then you know against these guys the game is not over and on the future level maybe it's, yeah 90 percent of the times the game is over yeah. and you have to be constantly so uh yeah precise in your shots and uh, yeah, it's, it it gets so much more to the details. Every 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 step higher you you go, and uh, but it was really nice to play against uh, yeah a guy of this level and see what kind of things you need to work on. Yeah, I think you really uh, showed uh, like the level that you're at there. I mean, uh, obviously th you're three hundred and one uh, at the moment, which uh, is obviously going to keep improving. But with that type of match against him, with the first game of the match, you went to six juices on your first yeah. service game. Is this like, well, how does that affect you in like a match when you start off with six juices on your own serve? Is this a, a hard mental thing to get <laughs> to get over? Yeah, and for my breath as well. I was quite nervous <laughs> for the, before the match. Which is, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, yeah, it's normal. It's uh, it's it's human and. Uh, of course, your first semi-final is always special. Even there wasn't, there was like five people watching, um, <laughs> uh, but it's still special. And uh, against that kind of opponent, was just like uh, making every ball and putting so much pressure on the second serve, especially. And um, yeah, it, it, going to six juice, but eventually winning the game was. Uh, it gave it gives you a little bit of confidence, and it's always a bummer if you lose the first game if you get broken right away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it yeah, it felt it felt like uh, he puts the pressure on immediately when you are yeah having a, such a struggle in the first game. Yeah, it really bodes well though for your future and stuff. And next year, are you is your aim to sort of enter more challenger titles or focus on the ITF tour? Uh, I hope I'm uh, I can play the challenger tour, uh, but yeah. it's not uh, certain yet. Where, uh, yeah, what kind of tournaments they are getting organized uh i'm now 300 but i don't know if i'm going to be in the challenges that's that's just a question and 
uh, there are no challengers planned yet uh, yep. so we need to be patient and wait for that how how do you find uh like playing on the clay courts because obviously you did very well over in the challengers over in south america are they any different to playing on the clay courts over in europe at all yeah it's it's a lot of different uh i think um but there's a difference between uh, like spain and lower uh, south of france because there's it's a little bit uh warmer then and i like more the warmer conditions because okay. like in in holland and germany and uh, e uh yeah eastern europe it's a little bit colder and it's, uh, more rainy and the courts are getting slower um and i like it more when it's a little a little bit faster clay uh, yeah because i i'm not just like the strongest player but yeah it helps my game a little bit if it's going a little bit faster do you find and in, and in south america it's always quite quite warm and quite fast so that fits me well so i'm probably going back there more often <laughs> <laughs> yeah why not why not if you've done yeah. so well in this tournament why not go back and you might be able to go one step further next time well not just that also when you're not playing tennis some nice beaches as well <laughs> yeah that's true that's true <laughs> that's it why not mate take advantage of it i mean with with those type of tournaments as well uh we spoke to uh uh Huesler, uh, uh earlier on and uh he was saying about altitude and playing at altitude and how this can sometimes affect uh how you play he really likes playing at altitude uh, are you, yeah. does it have any effect on you and the way that your game plays um i don't like it a lot uh i played in clusters to 25k uh, and there's it's like 1200 meters over there i made okay. finals there though but uh, i played juniors as well two years uh, in a row there but I don't like it really much. Uh, it's pretty difficult to get uh, the control of, uh, over the ball. But I think the big service and uh, uh, the guys who need it from the yeah, the one-two punches and uh, yep. don't have to grind for every ball like me. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's uh, yeah, they have a more yeah. I think they like it more than the yeah the players like me. Well, definitely. Uh, do you... Do you see the, yourself uh, at some point? I, I was gonna. I was sort of thinking in in my head just then. Is this gonna affect like your gas tank and like uh, how long you can run around on court? Obviously, when you're at higher altitude, you're yeah. gonna have to be super fit. You might have had to have trained in a higher altitude. Yeah. I only learn these things from watching like boxing and UFC <laughs> because I know that they fight at different like uh, places, and sometimes some of these fighters they gas out in the first like two rounds and yeah. then they don't have any uh, energy left is this similar for tennis players first step, uh, you know, well if you're going to alt altitude you probably going there two or yeah, one or two days earlier than normal uh, if you're playing like on tuesday or wednesday you're going there on saturday to or friday even uh, to get used to the conditions because it's like different and uh, when you're hitting the first ball uh your breath is like it's it, it feels like you didn't do anything for like three weeks or and with the ball your <laughs> first ball you hit is going right into the fence uh so you need to get used to yeah you need to get used to it but yeah uh, you get used to it like after 15 minutes so that's no problem uh, that's yeah talk, talking about a bit closer to home uh i noticed at the beginning of the year you was over in the uk playing some tennis obviously yeah. me and ben went from he's in london i'm just on the outskirts of london um what was your experience like of the uk obviously we've got a few young players in the itfs uh we've got jack draper uh matasevich i know you played him as well you managed to beat him yeah uh, what's your experience like in the uk oh uh, yeah i know those guys for a long time from the juniors as well uh jack is playing unbelievable i think he's playing uh i don't know if he after uh, after the restart uh, of the tournaments he didn't play for a long time Okay. Uh, maybe he was injured or some kind of things uh, but he's, oh, yeah. he has a big game and he played unbelievable there in the, those tournaments as well i think he managed to win one in one final um yeah he made some good progression and want to save his as well a really tough opponent and that was one of the uh most bizarre matches i played um that year or even in my in my career it was uh, like a okay. three and a half hour battle on indoor heart. <laughs> three tie breaks yeah yeah three and a half hours on indoor heart that's not quite often um <laughs> so yeah it was uh, a match that i won't uh, 
forget for a long time. No, definitely not. I mean, uh, you obviously came up. I know it wasn't uh, it wasn't in the UK, I don't believe, but then you came up against uh, one of our UK players when you won an ITF, I believe, in 2019, Ryan Penniston. And yep. then, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to have a look back through just to see which uh, it was in Fort Worth in the USA. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah and you, uh, yeah, took out right and six two six love yeah. in the final. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was the perfect example of the perfect match. Uh, I I don't know. He gave me a handshake as well, and uh, after in the in the dressing room, he said, "Yeah, you didn't seem to." want to miss a ball today i was like no <laughs> I, I didn't know how to miss a ball and it, it's such a great feeling and especially a good timing to do that in the final when, oh. when you have days like this does it not make you feel unbeatable it feels like you can play against anyone you feel like oh, i'll be all right today yeah it's such a good feeling and you're like look like, like playing and i can't miss a ball and i, I want this forever <laughs> I, I can i can go for days with this but yeah it, it's unlucky <laughs> that it's the next day could be yeah it could be worse yeah, I've got a, quite an interesting question. Obviously, me and JG, we aren't tennis players at all. Well, we play a bit, but we're not professional oh, level. Yourself, I do play a little bit. <laughs> yeah, no, but we're not professional level. <laughs> That's why I'm. It's always interesting to know, like, what's the sort of feeling from someone like yourself? You're obviously 20 years old now. You're at the start of your career. You've got the. What was it like uh, when you finally made the decision to turn professional? And what was it like, like playing your first professional matches? Like, is that like a real, what sort of feeling do you get inside thinking, wow, this is my life now. This is, I'm now a professional tennis player. Yeah, there's not, not a, a particular uh, moment that you are like, uh, think from, okay, now my life is going to change and I'm going to <laughs> tennis. Yeah. Uh, but it just goes from, from moment to moment. And uh, yeah, yeah. Like three years ago, I was still in juniors and I thinking uh, about going to college uh, because not uh, being sure if I was yeah good enough to go pro right away. And uh, yeah, now I'm here in two years. I'm 300, so I'm pretty happy to be there. But there was not like a specific moment like from okay now I'm going to make a choice from uh to make yeah to to be professional and this is going to be my first match that's not that's not uh yeah that's not happening well at least you've got your head on your shoulders and that's the main thing and you're like weighing up the options as you go which is probably yeah, a, a, a very wise uh choice because tennis uh, like we've spoken to a lot of people can be a very very hard sport it's an individual sport we spoke to no career brutal career it's very no, brutal because everyone inside of the top yeah. 500 can play good tennis there's yeah. not really a question about that like you was touching on earlier it's the it's the fine details at times there's only right. fine margins in matches and yeah. um hopefully 2020 you've been able to sort of develop slightly your game to sort of realize and work on certain things so you can be better next year yeah of course and sometimes it's such a good uh, example of like the the future guys uh, the, the guys were playing like 15 Ks and 25 Ks. Sometimes they, they are even hitting harder the challenger guys and uh, yeah. the EP is a different level, but uh, sometimes they are even hitting harder, but there it's going such, yeah, it's going more and more about the details and not yeah. mi not giving like yeah. any, uh, yeah, small presence, like we say it in Holland uh, to the opponent, like two or three mistakes a game. That's not, yeah, that's not acceptable. Yeah, ultimately, the more consistent you can be, the better. And that's what makes you get up the rankings and progress to the next level. Yeah, of course. Definitely. Yeah. yeah of course. Do, you, do you find the... How do you find like playing against... Obviously, we mentioned someone like Jack Draper. Obviously, he's like six foot five or something uh, ridiculously tall. I think... What are you? Are you like five, uh, 11, like around the six yeah, foot? Yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so... What's it like playing these? Uh, obviously, there's other young players out there. We just spoke to Huesler. He's obviously six foot five. All these guys who are like giants, like yeah. on the court. Like, what's it like? And they're obviously pretty powerful. How is it playing people like that on the court? Uh, yeah, they. Every, every, I think everyone has their uh, own uh, weapons, and they can. Uh, I don't know how to say, but they can uh managed to hit like harder serves or make better angles or things but uh maybe their footwork isn't isn't uh, like mine or with my with my length uh 
uh, I think everyone has their strong strong things in their game. Uh, but you just have to find a way against every different opponent. And that's the fun thing about tennis. Uh, every every opponent is uh, is different and uh, no match is the same. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. winding on to sort of more now. Obviously, the last match uh, you played wasn't the most successful. Bit of a strange one, really, against uh, Vit, uh, Kopriva. Yeah. Uh, you lost, well, you, you lost in three sets. You won the second set, but the first set and third set were six love six one. What was going on that day? Uh, Sorry to bring it up. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's it's yeah. It's the thing about tennis. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the first set, uh, I didn't do. Yeah, I didn't play great, but my opponent was just hitting everything, and sometimes you have to say too good. Uh, I managed to turn it around a little bit. I was six uh, love one love forty love down with a break. I missed to win that game, and then the momentum changed a little bit. Just need to get that game to to break the rhythm, uh, and then I did some changes in my things. I played a little bit more slice, uh, changed the rhythm in in the in the game itself, um, and then he started to in the and then I won the second set, and in the third set it was like really tight. The first four games were really tight, or even the five uh, first five games. Yeah. Um, and then, but he managed to break me at two one. Uh, then it was tight game four one, and uh, yeah, he 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 played better on the big uh, on the big points. Uh, so that was uh, good from him. And then he finished it. Yeah, good. Yeah, he finished it off quite. Yeah, impressive. Yeah. Well, you made it through. Still, you made it through the first uh, round, didn't you, against uh, Alt Altar? Rimano, I don't know how to pronounce the name. Yeah, I was uh, I was used to play uh, uh, I used to play Munar, but he uh, oh. he pulled out of the tournament. To, uh, <laughs> Munar, that's a yeah. big player. Yeah. yeah, I was pretty excited to play him, but then then I saw him in the lobby with his suitcase, and I was like, ah. is, this, is this hotel not good enough? <laughs> and, uh, and he, and he, he no, I'm going home, and I was like, oh, okay, then I'm playing a lucky loser now. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have mean, you ever played Munar before? Was it would have been no, the first time? No, okay. it's the first time I ever seen him there. Okay. Well, he he would have been in really really good form as well because I think he'd won a tournament as well, won a challenger, and even been to maybe the final of another one I think as well yeah. just recently. So yeah. playing him right then would have been a real great test for you. Yeah, of course, yeah. and that were the matches like like why I went to South America to to get some uh, experience on that level, and uh, yeah, I was pretty excited to. To play against him uh but i didn't uh yeah <laughs> i didn't mind to play a lucky loser after that to to get some points yeah well um, you never know next year maybe you might get the opportunity to play him yeah of course uh, will be many more i think but yeah, in the off season what you've been up to have you been um playing much tennis at all or are you just focusing on just having some time off i had a week off uh but now next week uh, starting tomorrow, actually, the Nationals, uh, the Federation organized last minute uh, a Nationals. Uh, so that's pretty, yeah, it's it's nice to play some matches again. Uh, then I will have a, a Christmas break. Yeah, I think then Christmas. And then the off-season starts be, uh, because the, um, the plan is to start the season a little, little bit later because there are yeah, not many tournaments. Yep, Depends yeah. if there are going to be challenges at the early stage of the year. Uh, but I doubt that if I will enter them. So I will move the preseason a little, little bit more to the end of the year. Yeah. Sounds like a good idea. So, so, so did you say you're going to be playing with other Dutch players? Yeah. Okay, cool. So what what, what players are you going to be playing with? Because there's some, there's some exciting talents out there. Obviously, you've got the the highest ranked uh, Dutch player right now is Greek Spore. You then got uh, Van der Slup as well. Really exciting player. Uh, obviously, Robin Hassa, he's been around for a bit and he's he's still up there, 197. Eager yeah. seizing as well, just above yeah. you, then yourself. Yeah, uh, the only one not playing from that list is uh, Robin Hassa. Okay. Uh, yeah. But the other ones are playing, so I'm fourth seeded now. Uh, oh, cool. Felix Spoor, Van der Sandschulp, and Seisling are all playing. And uh, below that, Sels, uh, uh, yeah. Reithoff, uh, Brouwer, they're all playing. So it's oh, nice. just a pretty excited list. and. Uh, but we are practicing every day with each other, so it's it's excited to see how it's going to be in the in a real match. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll be brilliant for you to all play with each other and sort of push each other on because uh, 
the level is, is super high, uh, particularly van der, van der Slot. But for me, I think he's a really exciting young player. Yeah, yeah, he's 25 now. Yeah, uh, but he's yeah he's an amazing player. Uh, we always joke a little bit about him because he's slaughtering everyone in the practice. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited what he's going to be. Um, yeah, what he's going to be able of to. I think he has a lot of potential to be top hundred for sure, even yeah. more. Yeah, uh, but it's, yeah, there are many many things about. That you need to work on if you want to be top 100 and everything needs to uh be 100 percent right uh it's not only how you can hit a ball it's about the mental game as well so i'm pretty excited but uh, the same as flick uh he has some problem a little bit of problems with some uh, some some injuries uh mm. but i think when he when that both guys are like playing a full year uh hopefully 2021 i think they're uh, they have a good chance on being top 100 and even more. How about Davis Cup? Are you uh, looking to get involved with that type of thing? Are you where where are the Netherlands in uh, Davis Cup at the moment? Uh, we are, I think, in Group One. Uh, if we we are playing uh, Uruguay away in okay. September, and if we win that one, we are in uh, promotion playoff for Madrid. Oh, because nice. we, I, I went to, I went with the Davis Cup uh, to Madrid to the finals uh, as like hitting partner. So the, the, I, I was really excited to go there and such a great experience. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then we lost, and then we had to play Kazakhstan away. Uh, we lost that one as well, and uh, the week after there was a there was a challenge on the same uh, uh, venue. Uh, so yeah, it was <laughs> good to play that one as well. Uh, that was just before the the corona uh, cancelled yeah. everything uh, but yeah. i i hope i can play in uruguay but it's it's pre it's still nine and ten months to go so a lot of a lot of things can happen oh yeah, yeah for sure yeah what's it like uh what's it like playing in all these obviously you're probably getting to travel to a lot of places that you probably wouldn't have traveled to had you not been uh playing tennis what's it like going to all of these uh far out destinations like uh, obviously like Uruguay, Ecuador, Peru, like they're yeah. all amazing places. Yeah. Yeah. Do you get to answer that question, do you get to like explore the places yeah. when you're? No, oh, not no. at all. Oh. It's oh. such a shame. <laughs> yeah. uh, I went to Australia two times, two times to Melbourne. I didn't see one thing of the city. Oh. Uh, I only see, I only see the my hotel room, the the hotel and and the, and the courts. Oh. Uh, because when when we lose, we we are going home. Uh, and if we have like a flight for uh, a day later, we, we can explore the city. But uh, it's pretty weird because a lot of people say to me, oh, you travel the whole world. And, <laughs> uh, you must see a lot of places and things. I, and I see it, it. It doesn't matter if I'm in France or in, in Ecuador. I just see my hotel and the, and the, and the court, you know. You just know who has the best mini bar. That's all. Sorry, <laughs> you, just, you just know who has the best mini bar or yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> uh, well, yeah. there's a question that we ask all the players we have on, so I feel yeah. like I've got to ask you as well. And um, there's obviously a lot of other exciting tennis players on tour. Do you have one you particularly like watching? Uh, obviously, uh, Roger Federer, uh, but yeah. I hope he can play for a long time. Um, but I like uh, watching uh, David Goffin to, okay. uh, yeah, because he's a little bit uh, not. He is not similar to me, but I'm similar yeah. to him. Uh, <laughs> my game is a little bit similar yeah. to him. And maybe he's got uh, posters of you on his bedroom. Uh, yeah, young. I also, I also, no, I don't think so. Um, so yeah, I want. To, I, I like to compare my game to him and and see what kind of things he's doing. Uh, so I, I like watching him, but yeah, if, but like as a, as a person, uh, non tennis player, yeah, I'm a tennis player, but like to to watch my yeah my favorite is, is uh, Roger. Yeah, that's a very popular answer, I must admit. Yeah, no yeah. surprise. Well, yeah, will <laughs> be, isn't it? I mean, he's well, an absolute legend, isn't he? Yeah, a legend of the game. Yeah, uh, well, we've had you for yeah quite some time now. Uh, it would be great time if is we going first. Yeah, I know, mate. I know. It just flies by. It flies by. Yeah. Uh, we would l love to play our new game, which is we call Shot Clock with you now. If I okay. can quickly explain the rule. It's really simple. Uh, 
there isn't even a clock in it, so I don't know why I've called it shot clock. <laughs> <laughs> just because it's something to do with tennis. Uh, but yeah, all we're going to do is just do some quick fire questions where you just get a maybe a choice of two things, or we'll just ask you a straight out question and just give whatever answer comes to your mind. But okay, you can okay. say, you can say pass. You don't have to answer. Yeah, there's no pressure. Anything you yeah. don't want to answer, don't okay. worry about it. Well, don't I will answer. try not to do it. I will try to answer everything. And I've okay, tried good. to, uh, I've tried to, uh, I don't know, at least get like a one Dutch question in there. It's been difficult, but I tried. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite right. difficult. Eh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Here we go. We're going to put Jesper de Jong through the shot clock. Time. Right. Here we go. <laughs> Are you ready, Jesper? Of course I'm ready. <laughs> Here we go. Starting off. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Wilson or head? Babylon. Oh. <laughs> Holidays. Relaxing or adventure? Uh, relaxing. Uh, red or black? Uh, black. Clogs or bicycles? Bicycles. <laughs> Ajax or Feyenoord? Ajax. Hey, <laughs> well, that was quick. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Underarm serve. Good or bad? Good, good, good. Uh, Favourite Grand Slam? Uh, Wimbledon. <sighs> yeah. uh, We've had every Wimbledon so far. Everyone said Wimbledon. <laughs> yeah, we love that. PlayStation or Xbox? PlayStation. Top spin or slice? Top spin. Line judge or technology? Cool. Uh, technology. Hey. Something you can't do. Uh, play PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> iPhone or Samsung? iPhone. John Isner's serve on the Dow's forehand. Life's easy with John as a surf. John is a surf. <laughs> but it's, uh, something that you're scared of. Uh, being injured and not uh, making a career. Ah, that's a good question. That's a good one. Good one, yeah. Starter or dessert? Dessert. 100%. Wow. <laughs> These yeah. tennis players love their desserts. Yeah, of yeah. course. <laughs> Backhand. Uh, yeah. Backhand. Single or double? Double. The first thing which comes into your mind? Podcast. Hey. <laughs> your favourite surface? Clay. If you had a superpower, what would it be? Having Roger Federer's talent. Wow. <laughs> Guys, last but not least, who is the GOAT? Roger. If I had that answer on the second last question. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it sort of followed up, didn't it? They sort of tied yeah. in. Yeah. Perfect. Time. Yeah, well, there you go. You've been through the GTL shot clock. Some great answers there. Some funny ones as well. Yeah, really appreciate you uh answering our questions yeah and you know what you've got to do now one time yeah there's no passes and you know what you've got to do now you've got to go and buy yourself a ps5 and get some practice in. <laughs> uh, yeah but I'm, i i did it during lockdown but still my friends make fun of me uh, they're, they're all sold out though aren't they uh -huh, sorry they're all sold out now if i think yeah, aren't they? I'm, uh, I'm not able to do that <laughs> no nah, that... It must be difficult. Do you actually have time when you go to these different destinations? Is there chances to take along a PlayStation for a hotel room? Uh, yeah, you have a lot of time off actually. Uh, but most of the time, you can only practice like two times one hour. Uh, most of the time, and then you can take your PlayStation with you. But it's a lot of uh, luggage with, that you have to take. Uh, <laughs> and when you have to, and when you're going to South America for three weeks or something, you have a, you need to do a lot of clothes. But yeah. at the same time, you have Netflix and that kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah I won't be bored. Oh, definitely. Yeah, well, anyway, I just want to give a massive thank you to yourself. Uh, I really enjoyed talking to you today. Hopefully, you everyone who's listening really enjoyed it as well. I uh, enjoyed very it insightful. Oh, yeah. That's good. Indeed. 
Fair and uh, thanks for coming on. Obviously, good luck next year. Hopefully, we can have uh, the tour resume and be a bit more normal. Um, I'm not getting my hopes up yet, but hopefully, we can have some kind of normality. And I'm thank sure if much. we do, you're going to do very well. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, yeah, no worries. Thank Cheers, you. All the best. Bye. Cheers, Take care, man. Bye. Bye.